Manifest Destiny, they called it. Those early 19th century Americans who forged their way into the West. From Kentucky and Tennessee, many pressed on to the Midwest. Others kept on going right on down to the Rio Grande, or out to the very edge of civilization, the Pacific. They hewed out forests for homesteads, planted crops for food, hunted and trapped, and grazed their livestock. Back in Washington, the Secretary of the Treasury, who oversaw the collection of revenues from the sale of these homesteads, soon began to realize that the relatively small General Land Office would soon be overwhelmed by this enormous responsibility. He suggested that a home department be established to handle these duties. Now this wasn't a new idea. As early as 1789, a home department had been called for. But in their wisdom, the first Congress had decided that three departments, state, treasury, and war, were quite enough. Thomas Jefferson, the first Secretary of State, was none too pleased, having to spend most of his time on domestic matters, especially the disposition of patents and operation of the mint. In spite of the support of presidents and members of Congress, discussions of a home department always ended in a plan for further investigation. And so the suggestion for a department that would handle domestic affairs was studied to death for the next 60 years. Finally, on the last day of the 30th Congress, March 3rd, 1849, Senators Jefferson Davis of Mississippi and Daniel Webster of Massachusetts joined forces to convince their fellow legislators of the need for a department that would handle the growing internal affairs of the nation. In a close vote that night, the Senate decided, 31 to 25, to combine the land office and the patent office from the State Department with the Indian Bureau from the War Department and create the Department of the Interior. The new department took on virtually every task no other could or would do. Early tasks included conducting the census, granting patents, distributing soldiers' pensions, constructing the water system in the nation's capital, exploring wilderness, managing hospitals and universities, and even colonizing the freed slaves in Haiti. But in spite of this early lack of a clearly defined purpose, the Department of the Interior was to play an important role in the internal development of the nation and the welfare of its people. Shortly after the Civil War, Interior began its own official exploration of the American West, challenging what had once been the domain of the War Department. Major John Powell's exploration of the Rocky Mountain region, funded by Interior, emphasized the need for scientific, rational use of Western lands and resources, and helped lay the foundation for the modern conservation movement. Over the years, the Department of the Interior guided and nourished activities and programs that eventually went on to become separate agencies and independent departments. The departments of agriculture, labor, commerce, energy, and education, and the Veterans Administration all had their start as small offices or bureaus within Interior. But its nurturing enthusiasm didn't stop with its own interests. And backed by Interior, came scientifically guided activities which would harness the nation's resources to benefit society. One such activity, reclamation, gave birth to the reclamation service. By 1902, the reclamation movement had already championed the construction of dams and aqueducts in the arid and semi-arid regions of the West, reclaiming those lands for farming. 
1903, for instance, the Salt River Project with its Roosevelt Dam transformed Phoenix, Arizona from a barren desert into an important agricultural center. Later Bureau of Reclamation projects, such as the Hoover and Grand Coulee dams, the All-American Canal, and the Alva Adams Tunnel would bring water, flood control, electric power, and recreational resources to vast areas of the country that otherwise would have been left uninhabited. By the time President Wilson signed legislation creating the National Park Service, there were 14 national parks and 21 national monuments, most of them west of the Mississippi. Today, there are over 350 areas nationwide, totaling nearly 80 million acres. From the giant sequoias to the Statue of Liberty, the National Park Service has built and maintains the largest and most abundant system of national parks in the world. At the outbreak of World War I, the Geological Survey, which had been the pride of the government for its scientific innovation and basic research, was called upon to focus its efforts on matters related to military and industrial preparedness. Its map-making capabilities renowned worldwide. During World War II, the survey again directed its efforts toward mapping strategic areas and identifying critical minerals. Right after World War II, the General Land Office, one of the oldest bureaus, and the Grazing Service, one of the newest, were merged to form the Bureau of Land Management, considered the core of the modern department. From timber, oil and gas, to wildlife habitats, and from archeological digs to conservation projects, BLM conducts a broader range of resource management functions than any other agency within the department. By 1987, the Fish and Wildlife Service was operating 434 national wildlife refuges, 150 waterfowl production areas containing more than 90 million acres, 12 major fish and wildlife labs, 36 cooperative research units in universities, 73 national fish hatcheries, and a nationwide network of wildlife law enforcement agents. The Department of Interior has grown into one of the most respected agencies within the federal system. Whether meeting the internal needs of a new nation or serving the complex needs of a changing world, the men and women of the Department of the Interior have met every challenge. What started out as a concern for the land and folks in the Western Territories has blossomed into a concern for lands and folks all over the world. In the next century, twice as many people will be dependent on dwindling amounts of resources. The Department of Interior has already taken the lead in serving as a global provider of scientific data and hands-on help to miners, farmers, developers, and scientists throughout the world. Shaping policies that foster a better life for our nation and the world, a sharing of resources, better management of technology, and living within our planet's ecological means, and providing leadership and dedication that have become the trademark of the folks who work or have worked for the Department of the Interior. <laughs>